Don't pet the platypus, I know it's tempting. Given the chance, I'd want to stroke their thick brown fur, tickle those big webbed feet and pet the funny duckbill. And why not? What harm could came from this cute egg-laying mammal from Eastern Australia? Plenty, as someone who doesn't enjoy long-lasting excruciating pain that cannot be relieved with conventional painkillers, I'd really regret petting a platypus, especially a male platypus, in late winter when there's only one thing on his mind and even worse, something nasty on his feet. When British biologist Sir Everard Holm got a hold of some platypus specimens in 1801, he told his fellow nerds at the Royal Society how the male specimen had a half inch long, strong crooked spur on the heel of each rear foot. The female, however, was spur free. Holm suggested that it is probably by means of these spurs or hooks that the female is kept from withdrawing herself in the act of copulation. A very reasonable suggestion, but a wrong one. To be fair to Holm, he could only study dead platypuses. If Holm could have spent a year hanging out with living platypuses in their river homes, he would be seen that this shy semi-aquatic mainly nocturnal mammal is mostly interested in hunting on the river bottom for delicious insect larvae, crayfish and shrimp. In other words, the platypus is usually an eater, not a lover. But that changes in late winter. The males test this swell, they start fighting over the females and when they fight, they wrap their legs around their opponent and viciously stab with those sharp spurs. With all the action, Hom probably wouldn't be able to see that the males are also injecting each other with venom. Venom made by their crural glands, a sweat gland co-opted by evolution that swells with about a teaspoon's volume of venom during mating seasons. But even if he didn't know about the venom, Home would still see the loser collapse, its limbs paralyzed, while the winner went off to be a lover. And once mating season's over, the lovers would go back to being eaters, their testes go back to normal size and their crural glands go dormant. The good news, there have been no recorded human fatalities. But there is also bad news. We know from a few case reports that the Randy, angry male can drive his spurs into you so viciously that he'll require manual disengagement, meaning you'll have to yank his spurs out of your wounds. This would be rather difficult as you would likely be distracted by pain that was immediate, sustained and devastating. Not even morphine would work against it. The doctors would have to inject local anesthesia to make it stop, but that pain's just the beginning. Soon you might become nauseated, suffer from cold sweats and watch as the muscles wasted away in your hand. That's all for today, thanks for watching and please share and subscribe.